today I'm going to have a go at drawing this pattern. I like to print it out and just to acknowledge the author of this document also print out this as well so I've always got a record of whose work I'm working with, in this case Master Muhammad Al Janabi and then I print out the instructions and just work through those. This is the pattern I'm going to have a go at drawing from scratch by following these instructions. Yep, so this is the pattern. And these are the instructions, so I'm just going to put this to, sit to the side because you can download these from Muhammad's group. And I'll just be looking at them, occasionally bring them into view. So first up, I need to draw a square. First draw a line, and the square is basically whatever, it, whatever that width is. I'm not really bothering to measure because it's not really that important to have dimensions when you are working with proportions. So I'm just going to draw a circle there to start with. Actually what I might do is just make this darker because, I, because I'm doing video needs to be seen more clearly. Now I'm just going to place that point there because the first thing I'm doing is trying to create a square and I think I will deliberately go dark just to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. Next up is I need a vertical line, so for that I'm going to just widen this so that it's uh, wide enough. And the same mark on the other side. Now I've done that, I can grab a straight edge, and I noticed every time I use this someone asks where this is from, so this is from a company called Blundell Harling, um, so you can look them up on the internet and you can buy these set squares. Next step is to connect, so you can sort of see, actually that's probably not a bad idea, you can see this go, even though it's sitting flat, this pencil can go underneath. And now it's too long. So now I've got my y-axis and my x-axis there. I need to return this to the radius I started with. And that looks about right. Just checking. Place that on the centre there, draw a cross here, there, another one there, and do the same. And now I've got the four corners of the square. So you can see me checking uh, the points or the corners, just making sure that everything is lined up. Anything down here? So 
So now I've got my starting point. So the first step is to draw these diagonals. The next step is to draw this arc. Let's hope that uh, my compass stretches that far, because that's one thing I didn't check. So, I'm going to place that there. Oops. And unfortunately, my square isn't perfect, but it is actually close enough. And I know you can't see this, but that horizontal line across the top there is actually just a little bit too high. Um, but the intersection of these arcs are okay, and this actually intersects with that okay. Okay, so the next stage is to draw these four circles here. And that should be quite easy to do. I'll speed that up. Uh -huh. Looking at the wrong circles. Next stage is to draw these circles and the radius is set here. So I just want to check a few things. You can see I didn't really get a proper overlap there, but I did there. So I'm hoping that even though I don't quite have that, have that overlap, things will still be fine. I mean, this is a relatively simple pattern. Um, but if you're learning, like I, I'm still learning, um, it may take two attempts to get this right, but uh, I'm not going to record this twice. Okay, so the next stage is to join these lines here. So let's have a go at that. Oh, and I think I've missed, missed one. Oh, I hope I've got these right. This will tell. But we want to go yeah, from here to here. There to there. Um, yeah, so my accuracy is not that great. I'm still going to just continue um, and see what happens. Mm, so that, those points intersected okay is good. That point looks a bit dodgy and so does that one so I've probably done something that's not quite right and I can see that maybe I should have had that lined up there and that lined up there 
Um, this one probably could have gone up a little bit, and this one probably could have gone over a fraction. So I haven't quite put my points in the right place. Um, but we will continue anyway. Okay, so the next stage is to put these four in. And uh -huh. so this this is probably where the problems start to occur. So I think this intersection here is okay. We've drawn from there to there. And this one here looks okay. No, actually, I think it's all going to work out okay. Hmm. Okay, so I think we're aiming for. So what, what I'm looking at here is I'm seeing this diagonal intersects with this circle. But over here we've got a few more curves. And I think that one there's not quite snapped to the right place, which is uh, why I was thinking I might have got it wrong. So what I'm really doing is looking for the intersection of this line with this circle, which is there. And not, not the intersection of the points there. Okay, so, so now we've got this far. Now we can basically finish drawing the pattern and getting to that point there, by the looks of things. And for that, I, I'm going to risk it and just go with a, a black pen, maybe a blue pen, something which just shows up better on, on the camera. So if that's clear enough, or that one's clearer. And there's always a danger when inking up like I'm doing and doing it on camera because uh, it's easy to feel a little bit self-conscious or really just you're so focused on what you're doing that you can actually focus on the wrong thing and, and get it wrong. So I just want to be extra careful here and Got a few shadows here, so I can't quite. It's so easy to join up the wrong lines. You know, sometimes I can see that line there and it stops there, but I'll accidentally draw it right through. So I will try not to do that. So I need to stop there. And that's it. The pattern is drawn. So what I'm going to do now is I just want to create some registration marks. I just realised I have my heater running, so you may be able to hear the sound of a fan. I should really have it switched off. So sorry about the background noise. Here we go. So now I've got some registration marks. I can grab a piece of tracing paper. And I'll be back in a second because I need some masking tape. And I'm 
I'm just going to move this down so I'm not going to line it up with the paper up the top and that's because I want this to stick to the tracing paper and the paper and the background and by background I mean the surface underneath okay so first up I want what I might do actually is do this in pen so again it's easier to see and maybe this time I'll use a use the blue so I've got my registration marks actually what I'll do is I'll do it in pencil because then I can take advantage of the pencil line in the graphite later when tracing. So I'm actually tracing this quite hard and it's again so that I can utilize the graphite on the paper to reproduce the pattern next. So I think that's it. We've got our pattern drawn. We've got some registration marks. So now we are ready to go. I wasn't going to do this today, or at least the tracing anyway. Um, but I might as well give it a go. Okay. So I'm not going to draw any horizontal lines or vertical lines for this. I'm just going to trace these down each time I draw something. What I want to do first is turn it over. So I want to turn it over because I've got pencil drawn on this side and I want to take advantage of that. And I just want to mark in those registration points in pencil after all. So if I was doing this on a wall, I would want to rule up a grid first so that I can line these registration marks with the grid, but just for today, I'm not going to bother. Um, I'm going to need to take this tape off here. You don't have to press down hard, just lightly enough will do the job. So now I can draw these in and just to show you what's happening on the other side, it's very faint but I can see that cross and I can see, I can see this cross, I don't know whether you can but it's there. And because I've drawn this in pencil on the other side by going over the top it will come through. So basically using that pencil line on the other side like I would use carbon paper. And I'm going to have to put my head in the way because um, I need to lean right over. And again, oops. That's one problem as it sticks to the tape. So again I'm going to lean right over and then I'll get out of the way. And again I'm pressing this pencil quite dark because I want it on both sides of the tracing paper. So now if I lift this up uh, it's probably a bit faint to see on your side, um, but it is there. So just take my word for it for now. So 
So I've got a registration point there. I'll just um, darken it up so you can see it. And I've got another one there. Okay, so what you can't see is there is a line coming up there and there is a line running across there. And so I have to get this lined up the right way. So I could go this way. That looks like it's going to work. I just want to double check what happens if you line up that way. That doesn't work. And if I flip it back upside down, that also works. And I think that's okay. I just want to double check. Make sure all those crosses fall on the same line, which they do. And I can see the pattern underneath uh, matching and overshooting, because I overshot my lines anyway. Just to make sure that they do line up. So you'll have to trust me on this um, if you can't see it on screen because it is very faint but you can start to see the pattern forming. The way that I've laid this out is basically I've got this as my centre rather than here, which doesn't really matter because when the pattern is extended out, um, yeah, so what I'm saying is this point here is actually that point there, that point there is up in there, so it's still fine. Um, it's just that I probably should have drawn this down here so that I could flip it over. So it's a bit clearer because I've got more carbon on that side, or more graphite. And I've just got to keep checking because I keep forgetting what I've drawn. So that one's easier to see because it is a bit darker. Now one thing I forgot to do was I forgot to mark out my cross hairs down the bottom here. Um, and I forgot to put a cross here and there. So I'm going to cheat a little because I know I've got that point, that point and that point. And I can actually see that it connects there. I can see that it intersects nicely there and there and there as well. And I can just do another double check. And as I mentioned before, and I'll mention it again, I should really have drawn up a grid underneath, or at least marked out all my registration marks. So I know that point's fine. I know that point's not too far off, but I need to put my finger there and just rotate it a fraction. And now I've got enough alignment. So these things you're seeing me doing um, in terms of, you know, holding that down and rotating it, they're just really practical ways of um, laying out your pattern as you repeat it. Um, so when you're drawing your pattern, as Muhammad would say, you've got to be as accurate and precise as you can possibly be, otherwise the mistakes you make get translated into your design and your pattern as a whole and things can look out of place and wonky. But having said that, 
There is a little bit of leeway, um, especially when it comes to working on wall surfaces or floors if you're applying this pattern somewhere. Um, you still try to get things lined up as as good as you can, um, but if it's you know if it wants fractionally out because your wall is a little bit rough um, or your floor surface is a little bit rough, um, you can sort of fudge things just a fraction. You just don't want to fudge things to the point where it sticks out like a sore thumb. Um, and quite often, in, you know, when it comes to stenciling jobs, the mistakes you see you that you're creating, they stick out like a sore thumb to you when you're doing it. But after a while you get to know that while you might see that problem, you might come back a month later, nobody else will see it, and when you come back a month later you won't be able to find it. And again, having said that, if it is a real botch up, you will see it and so will everybody else. So um, I guess what I'm saying is you just want to be as precise or as accurate as you can possibly be. moment there I thought I'd made a mistake but I just haven't drawn in what I need to draw in. There we have it so you could repeat this in all directions and you'll end up with something like that. Um, but just so that you can see what I've done more clearly, I'll just very quickly um, draw in. The reason why I'm putting these dots here is because the line is a bit too hard to see once the shadow is cast from here. So again, I can't, um, I know it's just the pencil's just a bit light, so that's why I'm putting these dots in. And that's because this is casting a shadow, which means when I try and line things up, I can't quite see. Two more lines to go. And there we have it. And I hope I've done it right. I'm pretty sure I have. So this is the finished uh, pattern that Muhammad created. And this is my attempt at drawing the pattern and using tracing paper to reproduce this this unit um, that way and then that way and then flipping it around for the other side as well so that's pretty much it so I'd like to thank Muhammad Al Janabi for this um, wonderfully short tutorial and I hope this has been of value to anybody who's um, drawing these patterns. <laughs>